Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Boy, are you in for a treat today. Today we are actually going to visit Dr. Kendall Hershey, who runs one of the really unique things at a medical school. He runs a greenhouse, uh, but it's not just a greenhouse. It is in the Children's Nutrition Center. That is one, only one of two it's, it, uh, nutrition centers that are located in academic institutions. And what it's really great is he is a plant biologist and his research is focused on kind of what I study. I'm a kidney doctor, nephrologist. And one of the cool things that I, one of the reasons I was attracted to the field is as uh, biology evolved to move from the sea to the land, the big uh, hurdle to accomplish that was the conservation of salt and water. We grew up in a salt and water environment at the sea, and now all of a sudden we have to do that on land. Well, plants did the same thing. They have to conserve salt and water, and they're also stressed by floods where they have to manage uh, the salt and water that they're exposed to. Dr. Hershey studies this exact phenomenon. He is an expert on, on cation transporters in plant cells. He had a great paper in plant cell and environment. And we are going to go over and visit what he's doing there. So this is, I'm excited about this. Come and join us. We're going to go take a look at what's going over in the Children's Nutrition Center. So everything starts with this little weed plant. It's a weed called a Rabidopsis. Rabidopsis, okay. And so it's the model system for plants. Is that right? Yeah, so this is the C. elegans, the zebra fish. This is where the genome was of the first plant was Arabidopsis to be sequenced. Oh, okay, okay. So we do all our initial molecular genetics with this little weed. Okay, and, and you you put a little seed in and then it yeah, goes in the exactly. incubator? Yeah, exactly. Let me see if we see. So well, they're just germinating so now? So on your way back to your place, if you look in the concrete, and so actually this wild type here is called Columbia because it was a professor at Columbia went outside and picked one out of the concrete. It's New York City. New York City. Oh, so then it's, this, a, it's like rat resistant. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So Columbia comes from Columbia University where the first plant scientists got I it. knew there were a bunch of weeds there. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Look at the root structure. Yes. Man. That's amazing. So you can do everything in a Petri dish first. Wow. Right? So that's how we work. It's like zebra out of, fish. You can sort of see it exactly. all. Exactly. And so wow. that's why we love it is that we can, we can start very basic and then work up. Oh, look okay. at this. I so can see here, mutants all over the yeah, place. Yeah, exactly. So this is actually our mutant. So okay. we we deprive these plants of this oxygen. This the Hirsch mutant? The Hirsch mutant. Okay. I would love that, yes. Because we expose yeah. these plants to a lack of oxygen for eight hours. Okay. And only the mutant survives. And all our controls are obviously dead. So let me ask you this. You know, we are going to be giving an honorary degree to uh, Bill Kalin who, who uh, worked on von Hippel landau in the oxygen sensor. Yeah. So it, is this gene? Maybe. It is not. So that's a good question. Is the transporter actually a sensor, yeah. too? We don't know that yet, but that's well, where the work's going. Okay, that would be really Yeah, absolutely. There's actually thousands of these weeds across the world. Look at this. It's like a little proboscis there. Yeah, so this one is from somewhere like in Sweden. So we, we're looking at gen totally natural actually. genetic variation that gives that same phenotype. Really? So that we can then... So this has the same oxygen sensing yes, thing? Yes, wow. but, but no one's ever looked at it before okay. because no one had that simple little assay now in we Sweden, did. do they have like more selective pressure? Well, this, is, well, this is actually from a high altitude. So we think okay, it could, so so it could okay. be related to that. So, so we're doing GWAS stuff just like you yeah, do yeah, in yeah. human studies in the plants to discover new genes that may be involved in the Can you just sensor. do, what, rather than GWAS, just do whole genome sequencing because yeah, yeah. we got them. Yeah, exactly. It's all here. And in fact, yeah, when I give talks here, everybody over there is just like, let's just sequence. <laughs> Only two places that have greenhouses in the medical school. That's us, baby. Truncatula, it's a forage crop. Okay. And so it forms a forage. nodules. For what for cows? For cows. Yeah. So it forms. Uh, so it's a model system that we use to look at anti-nutrient partitioning. I see. Here. Yeah. So Abby is actually a U of H student. She's been working us for uh, more than a year, and uh, she'll probably <laughs> you'll this? probably see her in no, Baylor Medical School okay. soon. And she does she does most of the greenhouse stuff by herself as a part time awesome. student. She's awesome. she's just awesome, and we're very happy to have are her. Are those tomatoes yours? Oh, no, those are Yuranis yeah. back there. Yeah, those are Uranis. Everything here is Uranis. Every, every tomato, tomato is related is Uranis. Things that are growing <laughs> are Uranis. Those perfectly. are tomato plants. Yes. So we send these to Texas A&M to, to create the they, CRISPR lines. So these are CRISPR tomatoes? Yes, that have been, that are now, growing our, that are now, now what, growing our Hearst so gene. So what gene did you take The Hearst gene. 
You took out the oxygen sensor? Well, the, 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 the that was the defect. The defect in the transporter was, gives the phenotype. This is pre-oxygen, right? Pre so, okay. so this is like the normal growth. So they, like, just like you saw the one plate, yeah, they yeah. all grow fine yeah, yeah. until you stress them. Okay, please. Yeah, so this is a dicot, a di and oh, this is a monocot, I, right? Yeah, so we're doing the genetic changes in both monocots and dicots to try to understand the difference. Known that. You should have. I'm sorry. But I think you're forgiven. <laughs> All right, we'll get, so we're trying to genetic engineer in both systems. You know, my level of understanding is that one's fat and that one's skinny. Yeah, and that, and that actually works. Awesome. What is this stuff anyway? This is rice. This is rice? This is rice. This is, this is never CRISPR. Like, you know, they this named is a university rice. after this. Yes, this is ridiculous. ridiculous. Rice, I mean, they're, yeah. they're monocots. It's a variety that's flooding sensitive, so we're trying to make it flooding, flooding taller. How does rice be flooding? It ain't grow it in water. Well, there's, but they, do, they have different seasonal rices for the, the water season. So the thousands of years of breeding have figured this out. So now we're trying to get at the actual mechanisms of that breeding. And then we have this greenhouse on the 11th floor. It's the most unique building in all of academia, oh, I would argue. Well, it's, it's the only one associated with an academic institution. Exactly. And so it, I love this place. it really has so many things that you can't do anywhere else in the world. Now, this is my, uh, uh, one of the USDA hydroponics. hydroponics. Michael uh, Djokovic is doing this stuff. He's doing 3D printing of these plastics. Really? Yeah, so these are 3D printed from his own lab oh, wow. to, to do hydroponics so that he's going to take these spinach plants and grow these in the really unique hydroponic okay. systems so that we can do stable isotope labeling. So these stable isotopes, as you probably know, are extremely yeah. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to design things that are hyper efficient to, for cost reduction. Yes. And yeah, and so again, a couple facilities can do this in the United States, but very few. Oh, yeah. So we grow the plants in here oh, in a different environment. So you can change CO2. Exactly. Yeah. And so you can really get to fine tune the growth characteristics. Very cool. Oh, oh, would you sign that? Would you sign the whiteboard for us? I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring in, I'm bringing Lily. And I'm going to keep him to that. <laughs> <laughs> now that has to be the coolest thing you've ever seen. I can't wait to get back over there. I'm going to take Lily with me next time. We're going to go check out the whole thing again. We haven't seen the whole part of the, the center, but we just saw the greenhouse and some of the other cool things they're doing. I want to end today with uh, several shout outs. First of all, uh, congratulations to Dr. Jenny Kristner, the Senior Dean of the School of Medicine and the School of Health Professions, who has been appointed Chair of the Texas Medical Associ Association Ad Hoc Council of Medical School Deans. This group is part of the TMA Council on Medical Education that coordinates the TMA's medical education activities with a focus on developing policy on medical education related issues and concern. Dr. Christner is a nationally recognized leader in medical education. She'll be an outstanding leader for that group, and we love her. She's, she's the best. Uh, also, Baylor employee recently volunteered uh, at Project Cure, where they help sort out and pack donated medical supplies that are sent to resource-limited countries. This is one of several volunteer events that are scheduled regularly so that employees can contribute to the community and have the opportunity to use their volunteer time off uh, benefit. Thanks to everyone who volunteered. It's something we do uniquely at Baylor. We provide day off for people to actually volunteer for community service. And of course, it's rodeo time. Football season may have been a disaster, but hey, there's always the rodeo. So a big shout out and thanks to, uh, to Howdy who came to visit me, the mascot for the Houston uh, Livestock Show and Rodeo and his friends who came to Baylor this week as part of the countdown to the rodeo. If you watch Howdy walk, I think he's got ankylosing spondylitis, but we're going to see him in the clinic, and we hope to be able to help him walk better. Anyway, also joining him this year was a team from 93Q Radio, uh, one of my favorite country music stations. Uh, Baylor Medicine is once again the sponsor for our chuck wagon races, which is uh, what I would call controlled chaos with horses and a wagon. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of tickets uh, available for various rodeo performances. I pl plan to attend as many times as I can get tickets. Anyway, uh, one last thing. The Lunar New Year begins on February 10th. 
And I want to thank Baylor's Chinese Student and Scholar Association for hosting a Lunar New Year celebration this week that included a performance by the Rice Lions Dance Club to ring in the Year of the Dragon. Happy New Year to all those celebrating Lunar New Year, and I hope the Year of the Dragon is a good one for everybody. So have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.